since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on KUAM News Primetime, the man who was live streaming and drinking before a serious car crash has been arrested. Plus, an alleged child molester who fled to Guam is extradited. And the speaker says an emergency session is not the answer for gas relief bills. These stories and more right now on your news leader. Hafa day and good evening, everyone. I'm Hannah Devonzo, and thanks for tuning in to your news leader. In Superior Court, Alice Akitakit appeared before Magistrate Judge Jonathan Kwan. Akitakit pled not guilty and waived his right to a speedy trial. As KUAM News reported, it was in April when a fatal traffic crash occurred in Mangilao involving a vehicle and motorcycle. The motorcyclist was identified as Albert John Carriaga Wells, who was transported to Naval Hospital and later pronounced deceased. The charges against the Kitikit include vehicular homicide caused by forbidden act negligence resulting in death, reckless driving, reckless driving with injuries, vehicle exiting private driveway and failing to yield to right of way, and no driver's license. His next court hearing will be before Judge Maria Sunzon. And the man who was live streaming while drinking and driving before crashing into another car in May has been arrested. According to a Guam Police Department's release, 36-year-old Ciro Ratongong was allegedly using his cell phone on May 18th when his Toyota Echo careened into another vehicle next to Las Palmas and Machechi, causing serious injuries. His video has been circulating on social media, and KUAM reported the man appeared to be drinking cans of beer while driving. He also allegedly called his actions a joyride to prison. Police arrested Ratongong on charges of aggravated assault with deadly weapon, vehicular negligence, driving while impaired, reckless driving with injuries, drinking in a motor vehicle, open container, improper storage, illegal use of a cell phone, and no driver's license. He was additionally arrested for prior pending cases of criminal mischief to a residence and criminal mischief to a vehicle, according to GPD. And facing several child molestation charges in Washington, Aichi Seiren fled to the island in an attempt to dodge authorities and has now been extradited from Guam. On May 3rd, he was extradited from the island and brought to Hawaii by investigators from the Office of the Attorney General. He was relinquished into the custody of the Hawaiian Police Department and Clark County officials and is scheduled to answer to the crimes in Washington. He faces three charges of child molestation as a first-degree felony. And former Gura attorney Mark Smith motions for acquittal on 27 counts of wire fraud and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud has been granted by the Guam Federal District Court. In a 23-page decision dated on June 3rd of this year, designated federal judge Ramona Manabusen wrote that it is unfortunate that this motion presents itself for the first time after a length lengthy jury trial and after countless hours expended by both parties, the court and the jurors over the course of five years. But in accordance with the evidence and the law as set forth above, defendant's motion for judgment of acquittal is granted in part. The decision reads in part, the court must determine whether the government provide property wire fraud such that any rational juror can deny that the evidence establishes all the elements for wire fraud beyond a reasonable doubt. Here the court finds that the government failed to do so. Smith was indicted on 56 counts in connection to directly or indirectly receiving payments as a landlord under federal housing assistance program during his tenure as the legal counsel for Gura, which oversees such programs locally. He was found guilty on multiple counts of wire fraud, money laundering and theft of property and monetary instruments in December of last year. And loved ones have created a GoFundMe page for Joseph Gamboa, the man involved in a serious two-car collision that occurred in Timuning last weekend. After being transported to Guam Memorial Hospital, Gamboa underwent surgery for injuries he sustained, including several bone breaks and fractures. He remains in critical condition. The creator of the page stated, Joe, Joe's been there and has shown so much love to many, 
So now we are asking for you to do the same. We are extending this GoFundMe campaign to ask you for your support to help Joe and his family during this tough time. Along with the GoFundMe page, there's a dine-in and takeout fundraiser hosted by Applebee's on Thursday, June 9th from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Tell your server in person or over the phone that you're supporting Joe so that 10% of your bill will go toward his medical fund. The Guam Police Department's Highway Patrol Division continues to investigate. And any legislation to ease gas prices will likely have to wait till the next regular session sometime later this month. Speaker Therese Terlahi says she agrees there's an urgent need to provide the relief, but the answer isn't an emergency session. Senator Jim Moylan has been pushing the speaker to call senators into an emergency session to deal with soaring prices of the pump. Moylan says there are several bills, including his, to provide the much needed relief. Get all the lawmakers together, he urges, and get it done. Speaker Terlahi has a bill of her own to remove the liquid fuels tax and save 23 cents a gallon. It's gone through public hearing, but it's been stuck ever since in Senator Joe St. Augustine's Appropriations Committee. She says the simplest solution is to release a committee report. That's the importance of the reports. It's like, then we're not acting blindly. We're not acting in a vacuum. We're acting with the actual testimony in front of us, any of the facts that are relevant in front of us, fiscal notes in front of us, all of that is in front of us. And so we're held accountable to that knowledge. But despite her urging, it remains in St. Augustine's committee. St. Augustine has a bill of his own to lift the fuels tax, but only temporarily. That bill's now had a hearing too. So is it Senator St. Augustine that's holding everything up? Well, that's where the bills are. That's correct. They're still there. They have not been released from the committee to the body. And, you know, I, I would like that to happen so the body can act on those. But Moylan argues they can pull all the fuel cost savings bills out of committee by calling an emergency session. Of course, it is within our prerogative to do that. But I feel like if it's just to bypass a public hearing that can be held, I, I would prefer that they hold the public hearing. We've seen emergency sessions called before and then the body, you know, without a public hearing. So they send it back to committee and wait for public hearing. And I'm urging Senator Moylan, you know, and if he has to go hold his signs out in front of the appropriations chair's office to do that. The Rules Committee meets next week to decide on the agenda for this month's session. Do you think uh, Senator San Augustine will have a committee report out on his bill? And will that be in the next rules meeting? That's very possible. That's very possible. That's very possible. For KUAM News, I'm Nestor Lacanto. The speaker thought she finally had the state of the island and the state of the Congress speech is all confirmed and scheduled. And now suddenly she does not. Governor Lulian Guerrero backed out of her June 7 address after her doctor said to take two weeks off to recover from a respiratory ailment. Congressman Michael San Nicolas then advised that he'll postpone his June 10th address until the governor is healthy enough to do hers first. The speaker spent weeks trying to coordinate the speeches. And if this is political gamesmanship, what's going on, it's exactly what she was trying to avoid. Since last year, I've told them, uh, I don't want this to be a political thing next year coming up. So we're going to hold these all, um, you know, as early as possible. So that was my goal. Yeah. But yeah, it's unique. It's a unique situation. This is Guam. It's, it's very unique. It's unique in that the incumbent governor and the incumbent congressional delegate just happen to be running against each other. For her part, Speaker Terlahi is still hoping both all important addresses will still happen. I can't force anybody to do anything. However, I was encouraging them to do those early because I, the purpose of those um, addresses to the legislature and to the people of Guam, primarily from the governor, are to address our budget, right? So she submits her budget in January and the, the address is supposed to, you know, be the explanation of it and the, the goals. No word on a specific date for either address. We'll keep you posted. And in the wake of more mass shootings in the United States, what protocols exist for an active shooter at CNMI campuses? Our Tomas Manglutnia finds out in this net report. It's the unimaginable, but it's our nation's reality. School shootings on campuses as thoughts and prayers pour in, but nothing changes. It's a hard but necessary question. What happens if it happens here? 
Anthony Frank is the crisis response manager for the public school system in the Northern Marianas. We followed the preventive mitigation system. In the preventive measurements, PSS will find mitigative ways of stopping the threat, eliminating the threat. So our very first, when there's a sign of an active suitor, PSS activate the emergency operational plan, which is a signal that all schools stress. They know the signal. Once the school students know the state signal, they know there's an active suitor threat on the campus. And then the first thing first, they go immediately into lockdown. Associate Commissioner Eric Magovnia says there hasn't been an active shooter on campus in recent memory, but those protocols are updated every year. We are in the stage of updating all our emergency procedures with regards to active shooter, um, natural disasters, or fire. Every school in PSS is supposed to be having four, has to conduct four drills, emergency drills every year. And usually how the schools do it is every quarter, they pick a drill that they would like to do. That includes fires, bomb threats, tsunamis, and active shooter evacuation drills. In the event of a lockdown with the threat of an active shooter on campus, the doors will only open if a password that only teachers know is given. There are also cameras at each school gate monitoring who enters and leaves. Throughout the school year, there's also a random exercise to test the plan. Where somebody from PSS just go onto the campus without going to the office, and then we time them to see how long before they identify the stranger and how long it goes to 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 lockdown, that is not a testing of the, of the personnel of the staff, it's a testing of the plan. If it doesn't go according to plan, they go back to the drawing board. This is the reality of when there is an active suitor, the suitor will be a stranger on the campus. And with the reason, you know, that the, in the USA, they had 27 active suitors up till, to, up till June. So with the increase of active suitor in the mainland, PSS have really strengthened that uh, assertiveness in the preventive measurement. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News. Still to come on your news leader, the judiciary of Guam holds a training aimed at stopping violence against women. And still to come, we head to Tietzen for the GP Taurus Success Academy's graduation. These stories and more coming up next. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app. Available at the App Store now. Don't need to work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replay. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. Guam is truly a majestic place with its sheer natural beauty, wealth of beaches, and culturally rich landscape. Unfortunately, Guam has a real problem with unwanted invasive species. Help us in preventing their introduction and spread. The coconut rhinoceros beetle, the little fire ant. The African snail, Siam weed. These are just a few of the numerous invasives on Guam. Follow proper custom procedures when bringing plants and animals into Guam. Help protect Guam. Tell your family and friends about invasive species. To report invasive species, call 475-PEST. With Prism Home Wi-Fi, I'm not just getting smart Wi-Fi that adapts and delivers consistent speeds that cater to my lifestyle needs. I'm getting peace of mind with real-time online security that monitors every device on my network. Parental controls with the ability to filter age-appropriate content for my child. For a limited time, sign up for Home Internet 50 or higher and get a free Prism Wi-Fi pod. Plus, new and upgrade customers will get a free $100 Hulu gift card. GTA, we start with you. Subscribe to our KOAM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOAM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOAM Communications. Go to KOAM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. The Pacific Association for Radiation Survivors is applauding the extension of the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act signed today by President Joe Biden. 
The PARS group have been fighting to have the people of Guam who suffered downward exposure from U.S. military atomic bomb testing at at the Bikini Atoll during the 1950s and 60s included in the compensation. In a news release, PARS President Robert Celestial said the two-year extension gives his group time to help ensure that Congress addresses a pair of bills that would include Guam victims. The RECA law was set to expire in July. With the signing of the bipartisan reauthorization bill, victims will have another two years to apply for compensation. And members of the judiciary and different law enforcement agencies are partaking in a training to combat the growing issue of violence against women here on island. Here's more. Guam's domestic violence statistics are alarmingly high, with over 1,000 cases filed in 2021. In efforts to combat the issue, the judiciary of Guam is holding a training on stopping violence against women. Several trainers were flown in from off-island to lead the training, including Director of Judicial Education and Leadership for the Center for Court Innovation, Danielle Pugh. So the purpose is to have all these uh, stakeholders come together to work together to better respond to intimate partner violence. So how they can work stronger and more coordinated and be more knowledgeable about the nuances of these very challenging and complex cases. The Guam Police Department, judicial officers, court staff, probation and marshals will partake in one day of training where they will cover sensitive topics and have group discussions. The training will better equip law enforcement such as Sergeant Gino Charfris from the Guam Police Department's domestic assault response team as they encounter domestic violence reports daily. It's definitely an issue that, that needs to be you know, addressed, right, that we deal with on a daily basis. Uh, I can tell you statistically that on average, uh, you know, the Guam Police Department responds to about 1,500 cases of domestic violence cases, you know, and those are just rep what's reported. Uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, unreported that happens, you know, uh, when it comes to sexual assault, we do anywhere between three to 500 cases per year. According to Pew, the issue of violence against women is not exclusive to Guam, as it's become the highest ranking cases of incidents in courts across the nation. She hopes the training will provide participants with creative solution in the fight against domestic violence. The shortage of baby formula continues to ravage the mainland U.S. United States, but has the nationwide problem reached the island's borders? Daniel Perez reports. Despite the recall of the Similac Elementum and Elecare baby formula products that caused a disruption to the supply chain back in February, Guam is not experiencing the shortage of baby formula that's taking the United States by storm. KOM got an update from PLS Supermarkets, one of the retailers that sells the formula, and Chief People Officer Luis Borja had this to say. You caught us at a good time. We got our shipment in, and as you can tell, we have a, a full supply of Similac now, um, different forms of Similac as well. This one is the advanced one. Uh, but we did get a good supply. Thank you to our suppliers uh, for delivering this. And so there shouldn't be a worry uh, about, um, you know, supplying families for the need for baby formula. Borja assures residents that other brands of formula are available, but the most needed one is the Similac for the Women, Infants and Children program, better known as the WIC program. Borja added that all Payless branches are now fully stocked with formula and are looking for other alternative brands of formula to add to their shelves. If you're not part of the WIC program, then we limit you to only one can, but if you are part of the WIC program, of course, you can get uh, unlimited supply according to, the, to your program. You shouldn't have any worry about running out. Uh, what we have learned in the past, though, is that we're um, trying to outsource other brands too that you know, maybe not necessarily be part of the WIC program, but at least alternatives you know, for other families that uh, don't have the WIC. In comparison to the mainland U.S., Guam is doing so much better when it comes to its supply for the baby formula. You just never know what's going to happen, right? We always want to be sure that we have a backup plan, um, and that's what Payless is doing right now, is developing that backup plan in the event that okay. Similac does run out, but, um, you know, we, we are in a good place. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. The J.P. Torres Success Academy held its graduation this morning in Tietzen. KUAM's Kate Balser has the story. The senior class of the J.P. Torres Success Academy has officially turned their tassels and graduated. The ceremony was held this morning at Tizan High School, where families had the opportunity to celebrate the achievements of the 39 graduates. I would like to personally congratulate all of our graduates. Go Wolfpack! Viva Wolfpack! Viva! Viva! 
the Home of the Wolves graduates wore gowns decorated with their favorite snacks and dollar bills to signify the first earnings in the new chapter of their life. Two years ago, Kevin Inlet missed out on walking the stage with his class. This year, he finally had the opportunity to hear his name called as part of the graduating class of 2022. This diploma is basically everything. You know, these people can do it, and they're willing to, you know, try their best to reach this. Then why not me too, right? Inlet has words of encouragement for high school students who might struggle with senioritis. It's never too late, you know, depending on your mindset and how far you're willing to take it. This is a stepping stone. The ceremony signifies an end to the students' past and starts the beginning of their future. Reporting for KUAM News, I'm Kate Balser. Registration is still open for Guam Community College's fall 2022 semester. Those interested in pursuing higher education can apply online at GCC's website, guamcc.edu slash apply. Other information about the Micronesian leaders in career and technical workforce development, such as admissions process, academic calendar, tuition rates and fees, and financial aid can be found on the college's website. The first day of classes is on August 17th. To enroll and for more information, email gcc.registrar at guamcc.edu or call 671-735-5531. And the Guam Department of Education will be hosting a job fair this Friday at Ukadu High School in Dededo. It's in preparation for the school year of 2022 to 2023. KUAM's Isaiah Uggen reports. The island's largest school system has over 300 teacher vacancies, 101 in the elementary division, 169 in secondary education, and about 36 in special education, counselors, librarians, among other positions. According to Guam Department of Education Deputy Superintendent of Operations Erica Cruz, unfilled positions are usually higher. The numbers are quite low. Typically, we do, uh, we, we typically have over 300 uh, vacancies. Uh, and so these numbers are pretty good. It's a problem the whole country is experiencing. It's always been a struggle for the Department of Education to fill vacancies, so it's not a secret uh, as far as uh, teacher shortages. Teacher shortages is nationwide. It's not uh, just sp specific to Guam. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics nationwide, it was reported about 5.2% of educational service positions remain open as of February this year. That is an increase from 3.3% in February of last year. Cruz stated that the island's largest GovGuam agency hopes to address this issue and wants to fill empty positions at this week's job fair. We hope to be able to fill these positions with uh, recent uh, uh, graduates uh, from the University of Guam. Obviously, uh, we also do have uh, retirees that we hope to that will hope that we hope that will come back as well as uh, limited term teachers that uh, who are temporarily certified to come back and fill these positions. On site interviews will be conducted for teacher positions. It is open to the public and applications will be available for school aides and substitute teachers. The recruitment drive is scheduled for 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Friday at Ukudu High School in Dededo. Application forms can be downloaded from the agency's website at gdoe.net. For more information, contact GDOE's Human Resources Office at 671-475-0496 or email at humanresources at gdoe.net. Reporting for KUAM News, Guahu C. Isaiah Uggen. Stay tuned up next, Dave Delgado, with your roundup of local sports. Northern Marianas, rise up to the challenge! 
June 17th through June 25th, the Northern Marianas will be hosting the NM Pacific Mini Games 2022. Athletics, badminton, baseball, beach volleyball, golf, tennis, triathlon, ba and weightlifting. Visit northernmarianas2022.com and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks to the Tensu Lin Foundation, Joe Tendale Foundation, T Galleria, Docomo Pacific, ITE, NMC, Elan Group, Mart Pack, Fish Guy Scuba Charter, Atkins Crawl, Glorified City Limit, McDonald's, Mobile, Triple J, NM Tech, and Bank of Guam. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. In GML Baseball, the Junior Nationals improved to 9-0 on the season and remain the only undefeated team in the league. The Nats picked up the win over the Pirates after eight innings via the 10-run rule. Nolan Cruz got the win with five strikeouts. JV Conception won for three at the plate with two runs and three RBIs. Ashton Satautau, one for three, one run, two RBIs, and a double. Javen Pangalinen finished the game two for five, three runs, and two RBIs. The Junior Nationals lead the standings in first place. The Tide Foods and Dodgers are tied for second with six and two records. The Tritons are five and two on the year. Games for Sunday, two in the afternoon. The Tritons will be taking on the Junior Nationals. And at 7 p.m., it's the Dodgers facing the Typhoons. The first NKGI Junior Golf Tournament takes place this Saturday at the Starts Guam Golf Course. The tournament is open to golfers ages 5 to 13 years old. Showtime is at 2 in the afternoon with tee time set for 2.30. To register, check out www.nkgigolf.com. The best way is like, a, you know, play real golf games, you know. And since the uh, pandemic, there's no, not many chance go out and play competitive golf. This is first year just starting it and I think of 16 kids with perfect settings, so each hole like a four, four, four groups, kids in you know, a five years old, above 13, you can go out, compete you know, against your friends, being outside, make a friend and learning more perseverance in you know, a sportsmanship, cooperation. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys over there. Opening ceremonies for the FIBA Micronesian Cup was held last night at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. Games tipped off today with Guam, NMI, Palau, and the FSM competing for a chance to qualify for the 2023 Pacific Games. We started this program uh, in 2017 as qualifiers for the 2019 Pacific Games. What we saw through that experience was that the, the level of standard throughout the region lifted. Uh, and we were able to see uh, teams coming better prepared, teams spending time on their high performance programs and, and really it meant the quality throughout the Pacific just lifted to another level. Uh, what we hope to see this time around, this is the first FIBA Micronesian Cup. Uh, you know, with, with the pandemic, unfortunately the Micronesian Games were postponed, uh, which meant that we were unable to use it as a qualifier, but it's enabled us to host our first ever FIBA Micronesian Cup. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Unified Communications, UC, is the next step in a business phone system. Introducing Docomo Pacific UC, your business phone. Instant messaging, video, voicemail, fax, and more. All unified on one platform and delivered through the cloud. Merge your desk phone with your mobile device. Turn voice calls into video conference. UC reduces phone costs. UC boosts productivity. Work better together with Docomo Pacific UC. Guam's auto appearance specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto appearance specialist. Over 20 years of experience. And the next pick in the 2022 NBA Draft is 
Johnny Davis. Time to tell you about Johnny Davis. This kid is special with a capital S. He's an incredible shooting guard. The Toasted Cheddar Chalupa is back, only at Taco Bell. And we wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Here's Jason Salas. On this June 8th, a Wednesday, mind you, we say happy birthday to Isabella Skye and wishing my baby sister a princess, a happy first birthday. May your life be beautiful, safe, and amazing, and may our Lord watch over you each day. Lots of love and hugs from your big brother, Cohen, Mommy Candy, and all of your families. Happy birthday, number one, Isabella Skye. Talia Ha'ani Benavidez Cruz, happy blessed birthday number 17 to my beautiful daughter. We love you so much and hope you enjoy your special day. Thank you for all you do as you are truly a blessing to us all. Love, mom, and the troops. Hey, salute. Happy birthday, Talia. Luisa Napati Regis Perez, happy birthday, Nana, and more blessed years. May the good Lord continue to bless you with countless joy and good health. Love the entire familia. Happy birthday wishes also going out on this Wednesday to David Lee Santos, a.k.a. Lito Boy. Happy birthday, Dave. Jerry Tyron celebrates a birthday today. And Jerry, we hope you enjoy your day. Please be safe blowing out those candles, and we love you. This is coming from Mom, Natalia, Natasha, Napu, and the family. And one of our own, Christine Mesa. Happy birthday to our own. We call her Tintin around here, guys. And she's awesome. She knows a ton of stuff. Always has a really, really good laugh always down to share a joke hear a joke she's really really awesome and tin we love you and we hope you have a fantastic birthday a great birthday if your birthday is on june 8th you can be a part of our cold stone creamery birthday club by checking out kuam.com and that's our show i'm hannah devonzo thank you and please stay safe guam In Full Zoom is presented by Calvo Enterprise.